Anche Om Ajnana Timirandasya Kyananjana Shavakaya Chaksurun Mirvitanyena Tasmai Shri Garavena Vanchaka Upata Rupyasya Kripa Sinasvaya Vacha Patita Nama Vanibyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasali Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right, well, I'd like to begin today with the looking over the six questions asked by the sages, which are all there in the first chapter. So this is from the student handbook. I'm, I'm sure you've all, you've all seen it, all right? So question one was asking about the, what is the ultimate good, the Shreya. There's Shreya and Preyas, Shreyas and Preyas. Preyas is for immediate good and Shreyas is for the ultimate good. So what is for the ultimate good for the people in general? So that was the first question. What was for the And that was an that that's answered in the second chapter, text number six. And then the second question, uh, second question, which is in text number eleven. He said that he, uh, the sages are saying there are many different scriptures. So, what is the essence of the scriptures? What is the most important point of the scriptures? Maybe somebody can mute there. If you have a lot of noise in the background, you can mute your microphone. Thank you, Prabhu. So, uh, the, what is that? there are many different scriptures all giving different instructions. What is the essence of the scriptures? And that is asked in question number, in text number 11, and answered in the second chapter in text number 7, where it talks, where we learn that bhakti yoga is important, and by doing bhakti yoga, we will develop also jnana and vairag that they automatically follow, where there is proper devotional service. And then text number 12 goes on, to, uh, the sage is asked to hear about the Lord, about Lord Krishna, who appears in the womb of Devaki as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, they want to hear about his pastimes. That is answered, of course, in the 10th canto, where we hear fully about Lord Krishna's appearance and pastimes, and it's also touched on briefly in the third chapter. And then question number four, that you jump a few verses, because the sages, they want to uh, encourage, they want to inspire Sutta Goswami, and they're speaking, describing their enthusiasm, and text number 17, they want to hear about the Lord, about his pastimes. So Jiva Goswami says that, it's, that this is actually referring to the pastimes and the purpose of creation. But Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says it's more than that. It's also about all the Lord's different pastimes, different, <coughs> different leelas which he's performing. So some difference of opinions between the different acharyas. It's not that they have the same questions. They see the questions in different ways. The questions could be interpreted in different ways. All right, then question number five is the next verse, text number 18. And want to, uh, the sages want to hear about the activities of the Lord in his different avatars, lila avatars. And that is answered in the, the third chapter of the first canto, where we hear about the different incarnations of the Lord. 
And then the, six, the final question, the sixth question, is well known. All right, the sages want to know that where are the religious principles found now that Lord Krishna has departed from the world? So it's a very nice question, very beautiful question. And they're asking like that. Okay, so that was the six questions. And we're going to go on to the slideshow here. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Are there any questions about those six questions? Everyone's okay on that? We'll go ahead. We're on lesson number three, and here's the review. wanted to ask the difference between the incarnation and the expansion. <laughs> yeah, well, I've never had anyone really give me a clear answer. What is the difference between an incarnation? Generally, the incarnations, they come into this world. They descend into this world. Avatar means one who descends, right? So they come into this world. But expansions, it could simply be the Lord expands himself. It may be, you know, not necessarily coming into this world. It could be in the spiritual world. I don't know, but nobody, I, I've never heard any of the Acharyas or Prabhupada anywhere talk about what is the difference between expansions or incarnations. But if you find out, you please tell me. <laughs> okay. So the, the prelude to the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first three verses are the invocation. And the first verse defining the Absolute Truth. And then text two and three describing the glories of devotional service. And text number two talking about what is real religion and what is irreligion. And text number three describing the taste which we get because it's coming from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami. It's the ripened fruit of all the Vedas. All right, so then we had this, the six questions which we've just looked at, and then the summary of the beginning of chapter two we looked at in the last class. We heard the summary, Sukadeva Goswami, uh, rather Sutta Goswami, in re replying to the questions of the sages, he began by first of all offering obeisances, offering obeisances to his spiritual master, namely Sukadeva Goswami, and also offering his obeisances to Lord Narayan, Nara Narayan Rishi, Mother Saraswati, and Srila Vyasadeva, the author. So that was uh, how he prepared himself in order to reply to the questions of the sages and then analyze real and pretentious religion. We spoke about what is dharma, what is kaitava dharma, cheating religion, you know, put, making a show, but our motivation is simply our own sense gratification. And then we talked about nirmatsaranam, which is important if we want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. We must be without envy. We have to give up that competitive mood of always wanting to be the best and everything. We want to become a humble devotee and give up envy of others. We want to appreciate others and definitely we want to give up envy of Krishna. The person we envy more than anyone is Lord Krishna. And that's why we're all here in the material world. Uh, so the appropriate attitude for studying Bhagavatam is to be humble, to give up that envy. All right, remember we had some homework from yesterday? Yes? Yes, yes, yes. so did you come up with some, some answers? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, would you like to share with us? How you res responded? Diksha Mataji, you can start. Hare 
Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, there is a verse uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Text Number 17, uh, in which Prabhupada is uh, telling about that uh, how beautiful is the creation of the Lord. So, uh, so as you had mentioned that we have to tell about the preaching application in this. So by this, uh, by this purport, this purport is helping me to preach people that how beautiful is the creation of the Lord. This is confirmed by great liberated souls such as Narad, Vyas, Valmiki, Deval, and Asad, Madhva, Chaitanya, Ramanuja, Vishnu, Swami. And also, uh, one next purport to this uh, is text 19 where Prabhupada is uh, mentioning in the perfect way where Shukadev Goswami first himself mentions that those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationship with him relish hearing of his pastimes at every moment. So, uh, uh, by this I can give the example of Ramayana, Mahabharata and Purana. They are the history of ages, but still we watch Ramayana on the television now, like the past Ramayana which used to come. So they are so beautifully, uh, they give the message of uh, life of Lord Ram, which is so relishable. So I can uh, relate them that how the spiritual world is so relishable, how the pastimes of the Lord are so permanent and always relishable. Okay, thank, and, thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Very nice to hear from you. Thank you for your thoughtful reply. Very nice. Okay, we'll just hear one more. Mithai uh, Prabhu. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Am I audible? Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for this opportunity. So, the verse which I have choose is 1.1.10, uh, Prayana Alpa Yusha. So, I find this verse is very relevant for today's people. Um, I see that, you know, uh, uh, it is very important for them to first get convinced that the scriptures are real. And when they read about this verse or when we describe what is written in this uh, verse, by Srila Prabhupada and what his actual words means, then they can relate to their real life that how they are really, you know, facing the problems, their lives are getting shortened, their standard of living is actually degrading and all these things which uh, tells them that, you know, they are lacking the, uh, they are getting, they are being very misfortunate to not study about self-realization and this helps to convince them uh, that the scriptures are all real, they have very rightly quoted about our current conditions and that will help them to then further uh, focus on the other subjects that are explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. So then they will relish the Srimad Bhagavatam well when they have fully, they have full faith in this Bhagavatam. So I use this, I think this verse is very, very important in preaching application. Oh, you, you like to tell them they have a short life, huh? <laughs> to, to an extent in a, in a polite manner, you know, <laughs> explaining them how people are dying early. Yeah, and how they're lazy, and how they're unlucky, and always disturbed, all their good qualities, huh? Telling them other people, you know, look at other people and then they can feel, you know, not directly telling you are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to be careful how we present that. Yes. Okay, yes, we'll, we'll go ahead here. Uh, Sutta offers his respects to Sukadeva and Vyas. It's the beginning of the second chapter here, the first five verses, and he appreciates the inquiries of the sages. Then, from text 6 up to 11, we have pure devotion to Krishna, is the supreme dharma. So Krishna is beginning his reply to the first question. Text number 6 is the reply to the first question which was asked about the uh, the Shreya, the ultimate good for everyone. And then text number se seven was the reply to the, the second question about what is the essence of all the scriptures. And then after that, then we will hear the reverse, that, that if you don't do devotional service, then Sut Sutta Goswami describes, then it's simply useless. It's just wasting energy, you're not getting any benefit if you're not engaged in devotional service. It's all useless, useless labor, right? Shrama eva hi kevalam, useless labor. So that's the second section and then verses 12 up to 22 is about hearing the Bhagavatam. 
and the process of achieving pure devotion to Krishna. We should always remember the goal is to develop pure devotion for Lord Krishna. And then after that 23 verses 23 up to 29 we will hear about Vasudev Krishna is the supreme goal of life and then finally we'll hear Purusha avatars create and maintain up to text 34. All right, so we're going to look at these verses. Right, this is a, the, the second section. After offering obeisances, he begins to reply and he's describing pure devotion to Lord Krishna, the supreme dharma. All right. Let's see, here's the verse. In response to the sages' questions 1 and 2, pure devotion to Krishna will result, the results of pure devotion, knowledge and detachment. Further substantiate his answer, Sutta explains, texts 8 and 9, that dharma is useless if it doesn't lead to Krishna Bhakti. Whatever kind of dharma you're doing, whether you're cultivating impersonal knowledge of the Brahman or the Paramatma or just doing straight bhakti, then there, there has to be devotion. Even you're the impersonalists, they have to have some kind of devotion. And without whether you're meditating on the Brahman or Paramatma or Bhagavan, there must always be devotion. If there's no devotion, useless. And then text number 10 says, the purpose of life is to inquire into the absolute truth. The goal of life is not sense gratification. That's not the real purpose of dharma. Religious principles are not just meant for simply sense gratification. Well, of course, everyone needs some wealth, but we just need enough wealth to maintain our existence. We, everyone's thinking, I need more, I want more, I have to have more. We should, we should want to minimize the demands, just be satisfied to have enough to maintain our existence, to maintain the bodily needs, that's all. Just, you know, the minimum needs, that's all and then use the balanced time to cultivate our spiritual life. That's the real goal of life, make proper use of the human life. Then text number 11, we hear about the Absolute Truth in three features, right? Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan, they're all the Absolute Truth. Learned transcendentalists who know the Absolute Truth they call this non-dual substance, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. So some people will see the Absolute Truth as Brahman, some will see it as Paramatma, like the Jnanis will see Brahman, the Yogis Paramatma, and the Bhaktas, the devotees, as they will see Bhagavan. So here's the answer to the first question about the ultimate good, the Shreya, the ultimate good for people. And very important verse, nice verse to remember and often quoted. Uh, Sutta Goswami is speaking about paro dharma, savaipumsam paro dharmo, so param dharma, the supreme occupation. The supreme occupation is bhakti. And the nature of bhakti to ad, um, bhakti means bhakti to adhoksaja, adhoksaja, the unconquerable, and that bhakti should be a haitaki and apratihata. It should be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Unmotivated. In other words, we're not looking for anything in return. We simply want to give pleasure to Krishna. We don't want anything material. And the result is yayatma suprasiddhati. We completely 
satisfy the self. So this is the supreme dharma, supreme occupation. For all humanity, everyone, people everywhere, in every walk of life, without discrimination, without distinction, everyone can take to devotional service. That will come out more in the second canto when Sukadeva Goswami offers his prayers. He will describe all the different sinful races. Kirita, Hunandra, Palinda, Pukasha, Abhira, Shumba, Yavana, Kasha, Daya, Yanye, Chapapa, Yadapashraya, Shraya, Sujanti, Tasmai, Prabhavishnave, Nama. That all of these different sinful races, they can all become devotees by the mercy of the Lord. By the mercy of the Lord and His devotees, they can all be engaged. So devotional services, ahaitaki, apritihata. And there's the important qualifications is that we shouldn't be trying to get anything material from this. We simply want to serve. We come to serve, to give love, service. And that service should be uninterrupted. So you can see the comparison uh, with Rupa Goswami's definition of pure devotional service. Anya bilasita sumnyam jnana karma janavritam anu koyena krishna nu shilanam bhakti uttamam. And similarly here, the highest devotion, unmotivated and uninterrupted. So. There's no contradiction between the teachings of the Goswamis and the teaching here in Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's text number six, and then text number seven goes on to describe the results of performing devotional service to the Lord. When we perform devotional service to the Supreme Lord, Vasudev, we do bhakti yoga, and the result is jnana yati asu vairagya. Automatically knowledge and detachment come about. Jnanam chayat ahai to come. So immediately acquire. One immediately acquire. Ahai to come. Immediately we get this causeless knowledge and detachment. When we're performing devotional service with the proper mood to Lord Krishna, we will immediately feel detached from the material world and we will awaken also transcendental knowledge. That causeless knowledge is knowledge of the, the sweetness of Lord Krishna. It's not the knowledge of like the Brahmagyanis merging into the Brahman, but this knowledge is of the sweetness of loving devotion to Krishna. We've, we develop that kind of appreciation. And then text number eight, the next verse goes on to describe what happens if you're not doing devotional service. We heard that devotional service was the supreme occupation. So what happens if somebody is doing their duty, doing their work, but no devotion? So, mentioned here, occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the Personality of Godhead. So, mentioned here, Shrama Evahi Kevalam, simply useless labor useless labor because you're not if, you, if we're not developing our attraction to the Lord then although we're doing our Dharma we're performing our occupational duty but if there's no consciousness of the Lord there's no mode of devotion then it's simply useless labor and this is the common situation people work they just work to fill their bellies, do their duties, to fill
fill their belly. Then the next verse goes on to describe more about the futility of material activities. Describing the real goal of life, all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Everyone's only thinking, generally we only think, how much will I gain? How much are they going to pay me? What will I profit? So this is the mood of the materialistic people. They're just, they simply think in terms of dollars and cents. So furthermore, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. That would be terrible. You may get some material gain. You should not use it just to gratify our senses. What should we do if we get material gain? If we profit materially, what should we do with it? Huh? What are you going to do? You, 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 you make a lot of money. Offer it to Krishna. Really? <laughs> Build a big temple for Krishna? Maybe donate to the Mayapur temple, help them to build the TOVP, huh? <laughs> they need a lot of money. So the ultimate occupation, we should, we want to engage in Krishna's service, not simply sense gratification. We, are, we have to be on guard. Prabhupada was asked, what, which verse did he think was the most important in the scriptures? And Prabhupada picked out this verse. Dharma shehiya pavargasya nato ritayo pakaupate. Natasya dharma ikantasya kamo labaya hi smita. Right? That we're, 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 we're not thinking about sense gratification. And we're not also thinking about liberation. We're not just thinking about just getting liberation, but we want the ultimate liberation. The ultimate liberation is to be engaged in Krishna's service. So our material engagements, we have our different duties. They should not be performed just for our benefit, for our material gain. We have to think about the ultimate goal of life. Then the Srimad Bhagavatam goes on to describe more about the process of controlling the senses. Text number 10. Life's, life's desire should never be. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I am just reading for a moment. I need to understand what is the difference between uh, ultimate liberation and liberation. And uh, because it is most stressful here, ultimate liberation. Can you please uh, repeat yeah. it? No, ultimate liberation is to be engaged in our constitutional position, eternal position as a devotee of a servant of Krishna. But simply liberation is just to get free of, free from the material energy, and often it means to enter into the oneness of the Brahman, Sayuja Mukti. The jnanis, for example, they are all endeavouring for liberation and liberation for them is to enter into the Brahman, to enter into the Brahma Jyoti, to give up their individuality and merge into the light, the oneness of the Brahma Jyoti. That is their liberation. But here, ultimate liberation is devotional service. And according to our eternal position in the spiritual world and we have a an eternal position there in the spiritual world and we want to come to that position we can actually realize our position in the spiritual world as a servant of krishna thank you thank you much
All right, then here. What we should desire. Thank you so much. What we should desire. You know, we said we shouldn't simply desire economic development and sense gratification. What should we desire? It's simply a healthy life of self-preservation. The human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's work. We're meant to inquire about the absolute truth. We're not meant for just, oh, having a bigger house and a luxury car and having so much money in the bank and having stock and shares in the stock market and all of these things. You know, people are all, they're, they're all accumulating so much and they're thinking with, these, uh, with this wealth they will protect themselves. But all of the money in the Swiss bank will not protect you from old age and disease and death. We have to understand what is the real mission of human life. So we should desire a healthy life, that's good, healthy life, self-preservation. Just maintain the minimum needs. You don't, we don't need to get uh, elaborate and have luxury living and high standards. Just live a simple life of self-preservation and inquire about the Absolute Truth. Spend our time to hear from the scriptures and to associate with the devotees who are cultivating knowledge of the Absolute Truth. That is the real goal of our life. So Srimad Bhagavatam directs us away from sense gratification. Life's desire should never be directed towards Sanskrit. Kamasya nindriya pritir, nindriya pritir, sense gratification. Labo jiveta yavata. This, people are thinking that gratifying the senses is the goal of life. No. Jivasya tadva jignasa nato naschehat karma bi. Tadva jignasa. We have to inquire into the Absolute Truth. That is the real mission of life, making proper use of the human life to inquire into the Absolute Truth. So Sutta Goswami is bringing out these important points in the beginning of his teaching. And here's text number 11 describing what is the Absolute Truth and how the Absolute Truth is understood in three different ways, as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And it's non-dual, it's, it's, it's all one, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. It's all the Absolute Truth, the Brahman is the Absolute Truth, Paramatma is the Absolute Truth, and Bhagavan is the supreme position of the Absolute Truth. We want to understand. One who knows Bhagavan, of course, he will also know Brahman and Paramatma. But one who knows Brahman may not know Bhagavan. If we only know Brahman, we may not know Paramatma and Bhagavan. This is a problem for the impersonalists. If one only reaches up to the Brahman, he won't necessarily know about Paramatma and Bhagavan. But the devotees of the Lord who directly worship Bhagavan and who are cultivating service to Bhagavan, they have realization of the subordinate features of Brahman and Paramatma. It's all there within the Bhagavan feature. So, coming back to text number six. First class, transcendental religion. First class, right? The paro dharma, pa, 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 param dharma, savai pumsam paro dharma, the supreme religion, the supreme occupation. 
Prabhupada says, that is first class religion which teaches how to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There is no consideration of which type of dharma or faith you are following. It doesn't matter. You may become a Christian, you may become a Mohammedan, you may become a Hindu or whatever. In other words, Prabhupada is pointing out, it doesn't matter what faith you have, that's not important. Maharaj, some students have doubts, they have raised their hands. Oh really? Yes? All right. What's the doubt? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj, in this verse you told that Vadanti Tattat Vidas, the devotee of the Lord, our lady has the realization of Brahman and Paramatma. So Maharaj, my question is that we are the devotee, we are trying to be a devotee of the Lord. So do we have this realization of Brahman? And if yes, then what does it mean that realization of Brahman and realization of Paramatma for a devotee? Well, what does it mean? Brahman. Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is describing Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. One who understands that he is Brahman, he is a joyful soul. So that is the first step of self realization to understand that I'm not the body, that I'm Brahman. And we become joyful. So there's Brahman realization there, understanding that I'm a tiny spark of the Brahman. And Lord Krishna, of course, is the Supreme Brahman. So realizing Brahman, we understand that it, the Brahman is the energy of Krishna. Yes, we are also the energy of Krishna. That was described in Bhagavad Gita also. We are the superior Prakriti. Right? There's the para Prakriti and apara Prakriti. So living entity, we are the superior energy of Krishna. We are the prakriti of Krishna, but superior, because we have consciousness. So we are also Brahman, but we are not the supreme Brahman. That's realization of Brahman. Hmm? There, there's more, of course, you can realize much more about Brahman. You can understand more how the Brahman is the energy of Krishna, it's a Brahma Jyoti coming from the body of Lord Krishna. And it's the it's a place of light. The effulgence, dazzling effulgence of the Brahman. Alright, so that's realization of Brahman. Right? Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. I have a question in similar uh, context. In Sri Shupanishad, we study the prayer, Hiran Mayena Patrena, where the uh, devotee is praying to the Supreme Lord, please remove your effulgence because I want to see your beautiful face. So, my question is. For a devotee, a sadhaka, uh, who is taken to bhakti yoga, will this stage come in his or her life that one will be able to see the Brahman effulgence? Uh, will, will that face come in our life? Well, if, well, for example, when you go back to Godhead, you're going to enter into the Vaikuntha planets or into Goloka Vrindavan you have to pass through the Brahma Jyoti, right? You're going to go through that Brahma Jyoti to enter into the spiritual planets. Uh, what I understand from your answer is, Maharaj, then that phase will come only when we are making a journey back home, back to God. But will that phase come during the life of sadhana? To want to see the Brahman? Well, that's not really any, there's no aspiration on the devotee for that. 
a devotee wouldn't have that kind of desire to want to see the Brahman. Uh, so why is the person in Isha Upanishad praying that, I see your effulgence, please remove the effulgence? Yes, that is because initially he's not really devotee. He wants to go, you see, because there are people who will see the light, not necessarily that he had to see the light, but it's being pointed out that if you do see the light, go through the light. It has to be pointed out to people because foolish people, they're thinking the light is the goal. And there was the one girl chanting Japa and she said to Prabhupada, Oh Swamiji, when I chant, I see a bright light. Prabhupada said, keep chanting, it will go away. <laughs> So we're not interested. Uh, Maharaj, we're not interested. Maharaj, in, yes. In in this text it is mentioned, Hiran Mayena Patriana Satyasya Apihitam Mukham. Apihitam means cover. Your face is in cover. Tatvang Pusan O sustainer. Tatvang Puswan Apabruna. Apabruna means kindly remove Satyam Dharmaya Drustaya. Yeah. Please exhibit, Drushta means please exhibit their original form. So that means the devotee who is speaking this, so he is knowing there is the hidden Mayana Patri, you know. He knows there is a dazzling covering and he knows that, that the personality behind covering is a person. So he must be devoted then. Yes. So he's offering the prayer. He's offering the prayer to those people who may not know that they can learn that behind the light there's a person. He's offering the prayers to teach the common people who may think that the light is the goal. You know, someone said to me, they said, I know Krishna can't be God. Krishna took birth, he is a father and mother, and then he said, Shiva is God, Shiva is light. You know, so he was thinking light is God. Yeah. But where, where does the light come from? So ordinary people, they're bewildered by these things, they're attracted by energy, and they're thinking that energy that they worship the energy without understanding the energetic. So the Ishopanishad prayer is there to guide us. Don't be just attracted simply by the energy. Go through the, that light and see the real person. Right? Less, uh, less, intelli less intelligent people, they're thinking the goal is the light. But the Ishopanishad, because Ishopanishad, it's the first step in self-realization. The Upanishad is the first step in self-realization. Ordinary people, they, they don't know very much. And you'll see in the Upanishads, they don't speak much about persons, about the, the, the Supreme Lord or anything. They simply speak more in general terms. So the prayer is being offered to teach us how we should pray. And don't be attracted, don't be bewildered just by some light, by some show of energy. But understand who's behind the energy. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, so much. Okay, we'll go ahead, All right? So, oh, wait, what happened? Okay, we're talking about, you may be a Christian, a Mo Muslim, a Hindu, whatever, and then the question of actual relationship, because every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And the duty of part and parcel is to render service to the whole. Krishna came to establish this type of religion, this 
first class religion. So Srimad Bhagavat says, Savaipum Samparo Dharma, that type of service is first class, transcendental. Right? So first class. What is first class? To render service to the whole. To give service to the whole, the complete whole, the supreme absolute truth. That is the real dharma, the supreme occupation. And Prabhupada was mentioning, it doesn't matter what is your faith. That doesn't matter. But everywhere there's, there's some Supreme Lord, the Supreme God is there. So that's important. Be the servant. Understand he's the master and we are the servant. So that type of service, first class. Remember yesterday we spoke about the, the characteristic of everything, the Dharma. The Dharma of sugar is sweet and the Dharma of chili is hot. And the dharma of water is liquid. So the dharma of every living entity is to be servant. And who to serve? Instead of serving dog, we should serve God. So this is the, the, the real religion, first class religion, to give service to God, first class, transcendental. Prabhupada, from Prabhupada's uh, lecture in Delhi, first canto, second chapter, text number six. Your system of religion is first class if you can develop your general love for Krishna or God, adhoksaja. That is the test. You may advertise yourself or I may advertise myself. I am a great religious person. But the test is how much you've learned to love God. Hmm, people may talk, no, I'm very pious, I'm very religious, I believe in God. How much have we learned to love God? That is the test, to develop love for God. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught, Prem Punarto Mahan, the goal of life is to develop love for God. How much have we developed that love? That is seen by service. How much are we attached and addicted to serving the Lord? That is the manifestation of love. Prabhupada explains more from the purport renunciation or abnegation for ultimate good is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the disease condition of life. Right? Can, can you understand this? Renunciation or abnegation, giving up the ultimate for ultimate good, renunciation for ultimate good is better than is, is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the diseased condition of life. Materialistic people, they're all diseased. They're trying to enjoy. And they're trying to enjoy the material. This is their disease. So better is to try to renounce the out for the ultimate good. Prabhupada continues, such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. Therefore, devotional service to the Lord must be pure in quality, that is, without the least desire for material enjoyment. It must be pure. We, we were talking nirmatsaranam, not dharma projita kaitava, right? It should, it should be pure. So devotional service must be pure in quality, without the least desire for material enjoyment. 
So this is pure devotion of service. We want to come to that level, pure devotion. Otherwise it's mixed devotion. Mixed devotion is not going to give the same result as pure devotion, obviously. This alone can lead one to perpetual solace in his service. This relation of servant and the served is the most congenial form of intimacy. We are looking for intimate relations. We can find the perfect intimacy in devotional service, a relationship with Lord Krishna, where we are the servant and he is served. This is the highest, the most congenial form of intimacy. We enjoy intimacy, right? So the, the greatest pleasure there is there in being intimate with Lord Krishna. All right, so now we're going to have a, this is a, an example, uh, that actually this is a question which we want all of the devotees to think about and come up with some solutions for this. Uh, Maharaj, uh, sorry to interrupt, there's a question I think from uh, uh, Dhananjay Kumar Prabhuji. Yes, what's the question? Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dhanbhat Pranam. Uh, my question is, Prabhuji, is that you said that pure devotional service, so that is pure devotional service only can be attained where, where uh, all the anarthas are eliminated and that is only possible when we are in a, a, a prema stage, a pure love. So beyond that, how or all other eight of the stages of Navida, Bhakti, that is uh, we can consider at the impure because still even a bhav stage, there is some kind of anartha which is still existing. So can we understand that way, Maharaji? No, no. I don't understand that way. I don't agree with your analysis like that. A pure devotional service is the attempt to render service to Krishna without material desire. In other words, there's no attempt to cultivate sense gratification. There's simply the desire to give service to Krishna. Now, you say we have to be on the level of prema, even on the level of bhakti, you see an artist are there. But rather, you've already gone through an art and a vritti to come to nishta and ruchi and asakti. You know. So even you get to the even if you're at the level of an art and a vritti, we're working on removing the an artist. We're not cultivating more an artist. We're working on purifying the heart. So that, just like in chanting the holy name, you know, our chanting may not be perfect, but we're trying to chant, and we do want to endeavor to chant. So there's, there's nama, intermediate chanting, right? Nama bas, the shadow of the holy name. So our devotional service, you may say, oh, it's a shadow. Okay, but it's coming to pure devotional service. It's coming there. It's just a question of time. So we have to, we, we do want to go on and continue to render service. Pure devotional service means there's no attempt to cultivate sense gratification. Although some anattas, some subtle things are there in the heart, they have to gradually be removed. But there's no direct attempt to satisfy the senses by gross sense gratification. Maharaj, Prabhu has something to say. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So that means that all the three categories of devotees, that is Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari. So even uh, uh, Kanishta Adhikari also we can consider as a, uh, 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 engaged in pure devotional service? Yes. Yes, he can also be a spiritual master, he can also accept disciples. That is told in the, in the Nectar of Instruction. The, disciple, the disciples he accepts, they may not be able to advance as well, 
But nevertheless, he can accept disciples, even though he's Kanista. And Prabhupada was asked, how many pure devotees are there on the planet apart from you? Prabhupada said, how many people do we have in our movement? And Prabhupada considered all the devotees in our movement to be pure devotees. They're following four principles, they're chanting every day sixteen rounds, and they're engaging in the service of Krishna. That is pure devotion. Yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for that. Okay. All right. Can we go ahead? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. All right. So here's a case study. We want to all of you to apply your minds to this, to consider this case and how, we, what, how we're going to deal with it according to our philosophy. All right. After graduating with a Bhakti Vaibhav degree from M-I-H-E-T, you have returned to your preaching zone. One bright young member of the congregation the son of a life member who is a big supporter of the temple has contacted you wanting advice. He has been studying Srimad Bhagavatam and has referred you to the following statement from Prabhupada's purport. All right? Jai Bhakta Ki. All right? So, he, he has referred you to the statement, to, to the following statement. Here you have the statement, Vishvakshenaktastuya notpadayad yadiratim shrama evahi kevalam. Right? We heard this today already. Useless labor. Useless labor from Prabhupada's purport. Therefore, we have to engage ourselves in occupational engagements that will evoke our divine consciousness. This is, pos <coughs> this is possible only by hearing and chanting the divine activities of the Supreme Lord. And any occupational activity which does not help one to achieve attachment for hearing and chanting the transcendental message of Godhead is said herein to be simply a waste of time. All right? So this is what happened. The, devote, the young man read this verse, he read this purport, and he read that Anything which does not help us achieve attachment for hearing and chanting is simply a waste of time. So, this young man is in his fourth year of medical college and he's a brilliant student in the top 3% of the state. He is now worried, however, that his prospective career as a surgeon will not help him to achieve attachment for hearing and chanting the transcendental message of Godhead. All right? Have you, are you get, picking it up all right? He's a medical student. He's a really good student. He's going to be a doctor, a surgeon. But he read that purport and he's worried that if he becomes a surgeon, he won't develop the same attachment for hearing and chanting. Prabhupada explains here from a lecture on the verse, You are working so hard simply for maintaining your body. No, you work hard, keep yourself fit, but live for tattva jignasa. That is life, tattva jignasa, what I am, what is God, 
What is this material world? Why I have come here? Why I am put into so much trouble? These are the inquiries. Not that every day go to the market. That is not Tattva Jignasa. That is Indriya Priti, howling in the market. Howling in the market. You understand, everyone? I hope so. So, more about the young man. He does not want to waste his life howling in the market. And he wants to dedicate his life to furthering Prabhupada's mission. He has lost interest in continuing with his medical studies and wants to take to full-time hearing and preaching of the Bhagavatam. How will you advise him? All right, how many people do we have here today? Thirty-two. All right, so we have to make some groups. Let's see, we'll have groups of, uh, uh, maybe groups of five people. So we have six, six groups. Okay, Maharaj. Yeah, five people. Some groups will have six. Two groups will have six, five people. Six groups in total. We want to know how you're going to advise him. Wait. Here's the group exercise. Discuss how you would advise him, keeping in mind the consequences of his actions and the principles behind these injunctions of the Bhagavatam. In your discussion, refer to second chapter of the first canto, text number 7 to 10 verses and purport and refer you may also refer to bhakti shastras and you can also give examples from your own experience and experience of other iskon members okay select a group representative to present a brief a brief Summary, three minutes of your conclusions, right? You only have three minutes. Each group, please note this, three minutes. Are three minutes for presentation or three minutes for preparation? For presentation. For presentation, three minutes. And for preparation, we, we can take five minutes? No, oh, yeah, we'll give you 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Yes. So I'm creating the group and then we can start. All right. Hare Krishna, Dandat Pranams Maharaj and Dandat Pranams from all the devotees. Sudha Kumar Prabhuji and Abhay Mahajan Prabhu. So I was just noting down the question, I just uh, missed the last part of it. So in your discussion we have to refer to 1.2.710 verses, then B part and C part is what? Anybody noted that? What, what, what was that? Uh, references from the references from, from, from the Bhakti Shastra, Bhakti Shastra. Bhakti Shastra mm -hmm. and the example from our own experience or mm -hmm. some other ISKCON members. Yes, right. Okay, Bhakti Shastra and personal experiences. Okay. Um, uh, 
like here we can quote from Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, uh, where in fourth and fifth verse, Krishna says, uh, tells us then basically that not just by abstaining from work or simply by renunciation, one can achieve perfection. And then in the next verse, he from he continues that everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities they have acquired from the modes of material nature. So he shouldn't artificially try to abstain from his like if he wants to become a surgeon, he shouldn't artificially try to abstain from it. Yes, and one more verse from the Bhagavad Gita from chapter nine: uh, Yad karoshi yad yad ishnasi yad juhoshi darasi yad yad tapasyasi kaunte yad tad kurushva madar param. I think. Uh, this verse also, uh, Krishna clearly says that whatever you do, you offer it to me as a as a fruit of devotional service. Yeah. And we can give examples of kings like Amrish Maharaj, you know, who were discharging their duties as a proper uh, king, but they at the same time they were following their devotional service. Because like we know the pastime of Amrish Maharaj and Yudhishthira Maharaj, like, you know, uh, they were very good kings, They were, but at the same time they were very elevated devotees as well. So being a devotee doesn't mean that we have to be free from, you know, we have to just leave everything. We have to do our karma, but at the same time, we should, we must ensure that we are practicing our devotional service and, you know, teaching, propagating the mission. Yeah, that can be the ideal that uh, everybody try to follow. Mm-hmm. And also... Agreed, but uh, one point I want to uh, bring our focus on is how we will... Um, explain or advise on the principles behind the injunction of this Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, what is the principle of this? You know, so, uh, yes, of course, the Bhagavad Gita references and the ninth chapter and the third chapter reference are good. The examples of Ambrish Maharaj and even Arjuna himself, how he, you know, agrees to fight. You know, he was thinking this is a ghor karma. As he mentions in the third chapter, this is a ghor karma. And he wanted to go to a renunciation part. So that, that clearly clarifies that part. But then from uh, from the so references from, from... If you see that in 8th verse, Krishna says that occupational activities a man performs according to his position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of personality of God. So um, it's yeah. like if a medicine is not working, then you should leave that medicine. Like dharma is a medicine that, you know, one should take. But if you are so engaged in your uh, dharma that you have forgot about the ultimate dharma, if you are so engaged in your nija dharma that you have forgot about the ultimate dharma, then you should leave that nija dharma as well. Like if the medicine is not working, it's not curing the disease, then like dharma is meant for our um, gradual elevation. But if it's, not ele- yeah. Yeah, if, it's, if it's not provoking, like Krishna here, here, like if you see the translation, if they do not provoke attraction, so if it's not pro- uh, provoking, then it should be left. So, um, like we can tell that, you know, um, but he he already is a devotee and he already has that attraction, he wants to serve, but just by abstaining from work, this is what Arjun was doing. Like, you know, he out of compassion and out of many things he was thinking, he was just wanted to abstain from work and uh, renounce everything. But again, Krishna, he said that you sh- one shouldn't do this because you have to act according to the material nature, you have to act like according to your nature. So just do a work in which, according to your nature, and all and try and you know uh, uh, cultivate this devotional service. Then only like offer the results as Prabhuji mentioned. Offer the results to him. So then only it's perfect. Dharma should only be left if it doesn't provoke attraction for the message of Godhead. Like otherwise, dharma is meant for slow elevation of consciousness. Got it. So, uh, this clarifies and uh, the last part I think we have to cover is uh, examples from our personal experience and experiences around this con world. So, I think here we can uh, quote uh, some of the very prominent devotees who are part of our ISKCON community like Amrish Prabhu himself who is the Ford uh, owner. Oh, no. but completely uh, focused in devotion and building TOP temple. And because this is an example of a T- uh, of a medical student, I would like to quote about one devotee. I don't know if you all know about him. Yuga Avatar Prabhu, who is a, a very senior devotee in Radha Gopinath temple. He himself is a, a very uh, you know good doctor. And he has uh, uh, been recognized into KM hospital as a dean uh, who has stopped all the suicidal cases. Because of his uh, spiritual ad- advancement, uh, he was able to coach many devotees, uh, many uh, uh, doctor students there, 
and till today he is coaching many doctor students who are becoming devotees good devotees and and the, and the hospital in which he is working uh, he has actually stopped the suicidal case otherwise that hospital was very well known in mumbai for every year three to four suicide cases used to be happening but from the time he has taken up the caring of the of the hostel you know the boys hostel from that time onwards uh, the suicidal cases has been zero and he has been giving an, he has given an interview on hari krishna tv also which was very widely viewed uh, uh, yuga avatar prabhu so he is uh, very famous for radha gopinath media uh, dramas also so various dramas me may mind you know so he conducts those dramas also so that way we can tell him you know like how this kind of devotees are there who are actually pursuing their degree they are pursuing their job at the same time they are completely utilizing all their skills and their knowledge in uh, propagating this uh, message of transcendental message of supreme lord making devotees like that yeah and uh, the main example like the most famous example we can also quote is of george harrison prabhupad used to glorify him a lot like Correct. because of him that in west you know the krishna conscious movement it spread like a fire when he composed many songs so um we can also quote that verse from bhagavad gita that you know yad achare shresht whatever um, the great people yad, yad, do the common people follow shrishta. yeah so if they are you know at a position where they are able to preach people where they are bhakti vinod thakur where they are able to um, you know preach more and more people so that will be more glorious than renouncing everything and you know working against your own nature of uh, uh, you know but uh, going against your own nature and renouncing everything so we can put all of these points as well sure mata ji so any any further points sujit sujit kumar prabhu you will you, you will you will present the summary or uh, maybe duti mata ji can do duti mata ji yes so i'm fine with it like if if anyone wants to do like this you can you can you can mention Okay. Maybe I can talk one example if you get, if the time permits. Yeah, you have Karl Prabhu's example. You can. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, then I think we have already you know. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, Hari Krishna. Uh, probably we can actually add another very good point uh, yeah. to the aspiring devotee who wants to become a full time devotee and at the same time uh, he is pursuing his surgeon course. We can give a very realistic example. there is a bhakti vedanta hospital at the moment in uh, mumbai as well as a hospital based in mayapur to actually treat the sick devotees uh, who need medical attention and all that so uh, while he has this extraordinary skills uh, or the facility provided by his parents to become a surgeon and the qualification he can utilize it in krishna service and we can also quote the famous saying of rupa goswami telling that uh, artificial renunciation means giving up your current duty mm. good i think that is also very well relevant yeah in in just to add uh, in fact the director of the uh, uh, bhakti vedanta hospital in mumbai uh, vaishnav seva prabhu he is the show sir bro yeah he is he actually funding the hari krishna tv from all his pocket he is not and it's called desiretry yeah and it's called desiretry means absolutely the income is generating from the hospital he is totally in, in 40 seconds the breakout room will close yeah means i'm just giving this example vishnu seva prabhu vishnu seva prabhu yeah yeah sure he is the director of vetranta hospital it's absolutely amazing yeah. work he is doing is con desiretry and as well hari krishna tv, uh, TV run yes. financially is financially funding him solely yes where oh, does he get the money to fund it from he started with his own thing and then now devotees are also helping so first he he put all the money for the is con desiretry he would have the both hari krishna tv recording in progress okay everyone's back <laughs> let's see 
which one? Okay, who's group? Who's group number one? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So we are from the group one, and we were uh, five people. So we discussed. Okay. You, you have three minutes. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, so we uh, debated and discussed both in for and against. So for, uh, uh, we, we, have, we discussed about the case of Arjuna himself. He was a, a, a great archer, but he wanted to leave away his, his, his uh, prescribed duties and uh, uh, go to the full-time devotional service. Uh, and and th that is where the uh, Arjuna, uh, Lord Krishna himself uh, advised him that uh, uh, he, he should uh, use his service to uh, serve the uh, instructions of Krishna, not for uh, uh, leaving his prescribed uh, duty and uh, uh, going uh, to the forest. So this point, we can try to convince the uh, student, which has been very meritorious and uh, extraordinary in his academic uh, uh, profile and we, we can always advise them that he should focus uh, he, he, his professions and use his professions uh, keeping uh, Krishna at the center uh, uh, to uh, serve the people and that is how he can increase the uh, devotional services. And in this context, one contemporary example is His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. He, he is helping the devotees to establish this hospital itself and through which uh, we, we are propagating this uh, uh, devotional service along with uh, using the professional competencies of people to uh, serve. Then we also discuss in great detail in the against, and that is where my own personal example, like uh, when we started it from in, in IOD way back in 1984, we started the ISKCON activities, and subsequently a lot of devotees have joined, and they have been extremely meritorious, but even after graduating, uh, without taking a profession or even a tinge of material uh, last, they have taken a full-time devotional service. One example is uh, uh, His Grace uh, Gaurlila Prabhu, who is leading the congregation along with the uh, Radheshyam Prabhu at the Pune congregations. And there are, in, 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 in Pune, we have uh, uh, more than 15 uh, graduates and masters from uh, IITs and from uh, foreign universities, but they all, uh, without taking any professions, they immediately and, and uh, join. So it all because of their their the stages of bhakti. How how the bhakti is really attracting him, and that is what we refer to uh, as sloka 1.2.7 from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. That if somebody has got really a strong Drive for doing the devotional service in spite of whatever the uh, professional excellence one may have, uh, one can take up the okay. uh, devotional service. Yeah. All right. Right. Thank you. All right. So, so you were divided. Some in favor and some not in favor. Some in favor of becoming full-time devotee and some not in favor. Was it? Some people. Uh, we, we together discuss both the points for uh, as well as against. Oh. But you didn't make any decision one way or the other. So, but we, we said that in this particular case, we will more advise in the case of uh, four cases because he has been an excellent uh, uh, spent and he must have a, a strong dedication for, for his services. But the, at the same time, he got distracted from and he got confused that whether he has to take a full-time bhakti. So in this case, okay. we were more inclined towards uh, suggesting in, in, uh, in, in right, case of... Thank you. Okay, let's hear group number two. Hare Krishna, everyone. This is Dr. Nambala Vaisalsa. So, myself, Madhusudan Vishnu Das is representing group number two. In our group, all the devotees, they agree that this particular devotee should not give up the medical studies at this point. He should continue with the studies because there could be many reasons for giving up the studies. One would be immature renunciation, which comes in the heart of a jiva when one acquires spiritual knowledge. So that person can be guided that you complete the studies, like Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna, you have a certain nature, you work as per your nature, taking up someone else's karma can be dangerous for you. 
So you stick to your nature, and if you prematurely renounce, that will be a false renunciation, attention, mithyachara. So he told Arjuna, you stick to your duty, following uh, your duty with the system of Varnashya, for the pleasure of Supreme Lord, Yagya Artha Karmano Yagya Lokarum Karmapantana, doing it for Yagya Lord Vishnu, you can purify yourself. Then if that devotee says, but here we study in Srimad Bhagavatam, my life should be dedicated for hearing and chanting. So we can tell that devotee, perhaps at this stage you are not ready for chanting in Kemi 24 hours a day. So though you are a student, you can take out some time for hearing and chanting and meanwhile continue your studies. If you see that in due course of time your renunciation is very strong and you want to dedicate your life for that activity, then the path of renunciation is always open for you. So you can complete the study, come back, and then, and then dedicate your life for time for that. Uh, we can quote examples from Srila Prabhupada's uh, life, where many times he instructed his disciples who did not get degrees from the university to go back to the university and complete the study and come back and then do a good time to work. And one of our group members, Bhaktavatta Nashim Prabhu, mentioned that this really happened in Mayapur. There were some of his friends who were medical students and uh, who wanted to leave their study. So uh, the sannyasi in that situation told them that I would suggest you to go, but come back to Mayapur and serve the devotees here through your medical knowledge. That will become service to Krishna, service to life. So we would tell that devotee we are not against your decision of taking initiation. We just want you to take some time. He fits in that idea, just like Raghunath Das was coming by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, go back home. When you'll be ready, I'll call you. So likewise, when you'll be ready, you'll be called to that to that you know uh, uh, to that path. So please have patience. And meanwhile, chant Hare Krishna and do Shabbat Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice, very clear. Thank you. Oh, let's hear group number three. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. So I am representing group number three. And um, in my group, we had Abhay Prabhu, Matayana Teshwar Prabhu, and Surya Kumar Prabhu. So we all think that uh, this medical student, he shouldn't leave his studies. We have to understand what Krishna told Arjun in Bhagavad Gita 3.4 and 3.5 very clearly mentioned that not by merely abstaining from work one can achieve freedom from the action nor by renunciation alone one can attain perfection and then krishna goes on to explain that not by uh, like basically everyone is forced to attack uh, to act helplessly according to the qualities they have acquired so we know that this person he is very inclined in towards studies because he is always in among top three percent of students so if he'll take renunciation, it will be a very artificial one because he'll be acting opposite to his nature and he wants to study, he wants to become a doctor, he wants to become a surgeon. So in such a case, one shouldn't just artificially restrain from all of this. We can see here in Bhagavatam as well, it is mentioned that occupational duties should only be given up. It is only a useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of personality of Godhead. So, if our Nij Dharma, like studying and all other services are getting in between our main Dharma, which is ultimately serving Krishna, then only they should be given up. But um, like if by practicing, if like if by um, practicing occupational duty and side by side as well, um, you know, practicing devotional service can attract other people, then it should be done. Like in Krishna, like Krishna in Bhagavad Gita mentioned that yet 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 that whatever great men do, the general people follow. We have many contemporary examples of Vaishnav Seva Prabhu, of Yoga Star Prabhu who are doctors, and they have ensured that in their hospitals the, there's a lot of preaching going on, and uh, that they have inspired a lot of youth, a lot of doctors to come into Krishna consciousness. In fact, we have the most famous example of George Harrison. Prabhupada never encouraged George Harrison to leave everything. In fact, when George Harrison wrote a song, it created an outburst in, uh, of devotion in West. So, if by being in, at a, such a position, one can also act according to the, their nature, and at the same time, they can also practice devotional service. 
So in this case, like what we all have decided is, what we all have come to a conclusion is that he shouldn't leave his studies. He should become a great surgeon and should promote Krishna, propagate the mission of Prabhupada and should preach. Okay, thank you, Maharaji. Thank you, group three. We'll hear group, group four. Yes, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. So I'm representing from group four. And uh, so our we concluded that. So we'll be, uh, we'll be telling or we'll be advising the student uh, for uh, not to give up his, uh, his bright medical career. And rather than he should continue with the, uh, with the preaching, with the, the pure devotional service along with his medical career. So how we'll advise him? So first we'll start with like, um, we'll um, refer to Bhagavad Gita Sloka from uh, chapter number five, Sloka number two, where Bhagavan is saying that renunciation of work and work in devotion, both are good for liberation. But both of you work in devotional services better than renunciation of work. That's what Prabhupada is explaining. So uh, clearly Prabhupada is uh, telling us that uh, Bhagavan is saying uh, renunciation from all your, uh, all your occupational duties is not, uh, it's uh, much, uh, it's not that good than uh, adopting a uh, devotional service along with your medical, uh, medical career. Also, the doctor have very good reputation in the society. So people actually listen to them. People actually take seriously what they speak when when they are uh, when they talk about any point. So they when they talk when they talk when they preach, they actually people listen and they inspire. And especially when a devotee is taking uh, who is keeping a uh, Vishnu pillar and start preaching, um, uh, then definitely people. Uh, people inspire from them. So also, uh, also a doctor has a very good uh, network, very good, uh, very good, very vast network uh, along. Uh, I mean, where they work, where they educate. So they have very vast people to uh, to preach, uh, to give the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Okay. Also, okay. I'll give one. Yes, thank you, Mataji. Interesting to hear you all quote the Bhagavad Gita third chapter. You talk about karma, you, but you're not quoting the second chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam, where Krishna's, where Sutta Goswami was speaking about <laughs> life's desire. Life is meant for athato brahma jignasa. You know, it's not meant for indriya priti. Being a doctor, there's so many doctors. We can always bring doctors to Krishna consciousness, but we need preachers. So if he could be a preacher, wouldn't it be more valuable to have a preacher than to have a doctor? Just to have your, your own study, oh, doctor, we have a doctor, a doctor, very good for our movement. But what about having devotees, powerful preachers, people who gave up all this material life to preach Krishna consciousness? Isn't that more important than just being a doctor? You say, oh, other people, they're doctors, they're also preaching. But first they were doctors. Later on they came to Krishna consciousness. And, you know, I think that they didn't begin life as devotees. They were doctors and later on they came into Krishna consciousness. I, I don't know. Uh, you, Prabhupada would, would, may encourage him to be a full-time devotee. There was one devotee, he was, you know, he had not begun his studies, but he was going to study. But Prabhupada told him, no, he said, just be a devotee, just be a full-time devotee. He said, why bother studying all this material knowledge, medicine, doctor, surgery, cutting people up, and ooh, horrible business. You know, spend so many hours in the surgery room doing operations. What a life. It's not a very pleasant life. How are you going to think of Krishna? Isn't it better he can be a full-time devotee and just preach Krishna consciousness? <laughs> anyway, you know, because you're, you people are not full-time devotees, you're all congregation devotees, so you tend to emphasize more, <laughs> be a congregation, be a doctor. 
but devotees, we would prepare to see him a devotee. And when Raghunath Goswami got free of his family, Lord Chaitanya congratulated him that, oh, it's so good, you were in a, you were in a hole where people pass stool, that family life, horrible. Now you've got free from that hole, you're very lucky, you're very fortunate to get free. And we, we talk about his nature, is his nature to be a devotee or is his nature to be a doctor? He's more attracted to chanting and being a devotee than he is to be a doctor. I don't know, I mean, we have, of course I don't know, but it seems like he has more attraction for devotion. Of course it shouldn't be uh, premature renunciation. We don't want to make, you know, it shouldn't be uh, just renounce everything. I agree, it shouldn't be decided too quickly. You have to give time. People need time to see which way they're going to go. Testing period, just like Raghunath Das Goswami, he was tested. And so also we'd have to test this young man. Is he really serious to be a devotee? Or is he just talking? Sometimes it's just too much trouble to study, they just want to get away from it. Anyway, we have two more groups. Group number five. Yes, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dharma Pranam. Hare Krishna. Am I audible, Maharaj? Yes, you're audible. Go ahead, Prabhu. Yes, uh, we are on Google 5. We got um, uh, Bhakti Prabhu Swami Maharaj, and Premananda Gopinath Das, Vishnu Kanta Mataji, and Namakrita Mataji in our group, and me also. So initially we felt that uh, the deci his decision of uh, to become a doctor is good or not, initially. But then we, we felt that, uh, as Prabhupada says in uh, Unipa says that, uh, whichever place you are, you are in, you, you, you continue preaching. So that way, so even though he, he wants to become a doctor and he will cure uh, many devotees, uh, he will also try to inculcate the, uh, one say the, the preaching about about the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to all the all the patients what to whom he has to whom he is actually uh, treating to, and uh, also uh, whatever Lakshmi he gets he can utilize that Lakshmi in the service of Krishna, so that way it's the indirect devotional service to the devotee. So that's also. It says that the shloka says that uh, 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 So the ultimate good is to uh, is to uh, preach the message of God to the uh, to the uh, all the people of the, the world. So that way, and uh, after that, he can be, he, he can become he, he can give a pre medical. Uh, Service to all, all these, all these uh, people, to all these uh, big patients or all these very uh, people around him, and in a way he will preach about Krishna slowly. And so, if he is he is a very expert devotee, all the others also can follow him, and the devotees also will to become Krishna conscious people, people in the world. So that way, uh, to continue in the same profession, he can still he can still preach the message of Godhead. And encourage others to follow it in the in the due due course of time. What do you think? I okay, thank you, Prabhu. All right, and the final group, group number six. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Yes. And Dhameshwari Radhika Dasi from uh, group six. We were five, and we decided that uh, we should not discourage the medical student immediately. Rather, we should make him understand that it is a gradual process. So, and Prabhupada is never saying that you should leave your duties. And uh, Krishna has sent us here uh, that uh, for uh, fulfilling our duties as well as our spiritual life also. So we can take two examples. Uh, first of all, we can uh, uh, take the example of uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He was a magistrate. He fulfilled his uh, duties and in spite of that he all uh, he has done great for our uh, for spiritual um, uh, preaching 
So we can take his example and as well as we can take example of uh, Raghunandan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said in that uh, Antare Krishna and uh, Bahare, you, you, you should not show up. What is, uh, uh, what is the attraction for the Lord you should keep within you. So we, we should not uh, discourage him and we also can uh, say him that uh, if you continue uh, your both spiritual practice and material and gradually if you see that if you, you are getting much more interested in spiritual life then after uh, practicing for certain years then you can leave and uh, give uh, and become a full time full time devotee okay you want him to be a, a doctor for some years and then Later on, he can become a full-time devotee. Yes, uh, first he, he can uh, follow Prabhupada's uh, uh, rules and regulations of chanting and uh, devotional service along with his uh, doctor. And after uh, working for maybe 10, 15 years, if he m gets interested, then he can become a full-time devotee. Well, he's already interested. He's already interested. You say if he gets interested after 10, but he's already interested. Why not, let him, it, why not let him become a full-time devotee if he can't be Maharaj, uh, uh, From the text 7, we, we can see that it is a gradual process. Maybe that he is interested now, but after uh, practicing for some time, it may happen that he loses his interest. Then uh, both of his life will be disturbed. So, according to us, that Prabhupada is uh, not uh, saying that you should immediately leave your uh, medical life and go to the uh, go to become a full time devotee. Prabhupada said it's a gradual process. Yes, that's why maybe I don't know. Maybe that's why Prabhupada gave us a routine life that uh, attend Mangal Arti and do chanting and then do your work and do uh, study Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, we have the example of Giri Raj. You know, Giri Raj's father was a lawyer, and his father wanted Giri Raj to come back and to run the business, right? And Giri Raj's father came all the way to India to get Giri Raj, to bring him back, and he came to meet Prabhupada, and he met Prabhupada, and he said to Prabhupada, he said, "How much do you want, Swamiji?" How much do I need to pay you to get my son back? So then Prabhupada said, bring Giriraj into the room. So Giriraj came into the room and then Prabhupada explained to Giriraj that your father wants you to go home. And so Giriraj said, I don't want to go Prabhupada. He said, I don't want to go. He said, my mother and father, they're always fighting and arguing with each other. And then my sister, she go, she's always going out with different men every night and she drinks and she has a, you know, not a good life. I don't want to go back to that kind of life. And so Prabhupada said to Giri Raj's father, he said, what can I do? He doesn't want to go. Prabhupada said to Giri Raj's father, his father was saying, look, I have a lawyer business, it's a big business, it's worth a lot of money. You're going to be the head of the company, you're going to be in charge, you'll be the head lawyer. You've already graduated from college, you should come back and take over and join the company and, and, the, and when I, I'm going to retire and you'll, take, you'll be in charge of the company, you can make a lot of money, it's a big business. And Giri Raj maybe, said, said, I don't want they, to go. Yeah? Maybe they were, li Maharaj, maybe they were living a uh, animal-like life. It was not a spiritual life. Prabhupada... Uh, so do you, Prabhupada think, do you think if you're a doctor, are you going to have association with all nice saintly people? You know, doctor, if we, if, you have to associate with all kinds of people. Yeah, you, yes. Hospitals. Is everybody in the hospital going to be a vegetarian? I wonder. You know, and then you have so many nurses around you as well, and the, and you have to cut people up. You, it's not a very mode of goodness environment, you know. It's not the mode of goodness. 
Now I'm just trying to, I'm just showing you the other side of it. You know, you're talking about one side, I want you to see there's another side. So what do you think, Maharaj, that what he should do? <laughs> well, he has to decide what's he want to do, you know. He has to, ultimately, it's his decision. But certainly we can explain the pros and cons to him. And how, you know, we have to also understand you know, we should ask him, where do you see yourself in another five or ten years? Probably you're going to marry. You're from a very rich family. Your father's a rich man. Probably, you're, almost certainly, you're going to marry. So you're going to marry. You have to support a family. You have a wife to support and children. You have to have something. How are you going to support yourself? Now, if you become a devotee, and you move into the ashram, become a devotee, that will be more difficult for you. It will be quite difficult for you to take up family life and maintain a family. And, you know, you need to have some, you have to think about going to work, and taking up some job. Maybe you, so you have to think about the future. It's not that just now, you know, all right, just now you're attracted to hearing and chanting, that's good. But what about the future? Hmm. So, we have to, you, you have, ultimately he has to decide for himself. What does he want to do? What is the best thing for him to do? So, you, we have to explain to him, think about the future. What? What do you want to, do you want to be fully renounced all your life and live in the ashram? Uh, some people do it. There, there's one man actually, that maybe you've heard, Asia Airlines. You know that airline, Asia Airlines? So the head of that Asia Airlines, he's a, a, a I think he's a Malaysian Indian man. His son is a Buddhist monk. His son is a Buddhist monk. His father is a very rich man. He has a big successful airline company. But the son has no interest. He's just a, he, he lives in the mountains. Asia, of... Maharaj. Huh? That is not uh, Asia. That is Ananda Krishna. Yeah, I thought... Uh, the I thought... you are saying the Buddhist monk. Yeah, isn't it Asia? Ananda Krishna's son. He's a millionaire. Uh, maybe a billionaire now, Maharaj. Yes, yes. Isn't it? Yes, yes, it's a billionaire. Isn't it? Another Krishna, not, uh, not Tony Sanders. Is, isn't it Air Asia? No, Maharaj. He's the Maxis owner, satellite owner, asset. Oh. Okay. He's much bigger, bigger man. Bigger than Much Air. more uh, wealthier. Wealthier than Air Asia. <laughs> bigger than uh, A. <laughs> okay. I, uh, yeah, I, it's Ananda Krishna, that's the name, right, yeah. Okay, his son is a monk in yeah, the mountains, mountains of Penang. Hmm, you know, it's a very, father's a very rich man, but the son doesn't want anything to do with it, you know. son just wants to meditate in the mountains of Penang. And what do we want people to do in Krishna consciousness? Well, we want people to inquire about the goal of life, atato brahma jignasa, that now you've come to the human form of life, you have to make proper use of the human form of life. Now, it is a materialistic environment to work in a hospital, to be a doctor, it's not actually very pleasant. You are encouraging people, and he has to study also so many years, more years, he's already done four years, maybe three more years to be to study, to go through, and, and constantly, you know, like, but you say he can give money, mm, no. he can preach, and he can preach to rich people, and he can get rich people to give money. You know, just, be, just because he's a doctor, he's not going to make much money, but if he's preaching, he can make so much money. <laughs> There are some devotee collectors, some devotee collectors like uh, uh, Devakinandan Prabhu, 
from Mumbai. You know, he's a very, very powerful preacher and he's brought so many people into Krishna consciousness, made life members, collect so much money. And and there, there are many other devotees like that, you know, they they don't work, but they preach and, and they get rich people to donate money. So you can't say, oh, he can be a doctor, he can make money for the money. No, it's not going to make much money. That's not important. He can make more money preaching to people. And uh, also you say that uh, he can preach in the hospital, but he's got to work so much as well. He's got to be in the operating theatre and so many things he's got to do. He's not going to get much time for preaching. But if he's a full-time devotee, he's got so much time for his, the whole day he's got for preaching. He's got a lot more opportunities for preaching. So, what, what does uh, Sutta Goswami say? Uh, oh, Prabhupada's purport also speaks about uh, even, even if he fails, even if one takes up Krishna consciousness and fails, still there's no loss. There's no dominion, there's no loss in that effort. He made the attempt, he made an attempt to be full time, and that's glorious. Even though he wasn't successful, just the fact that he made the attempt to be a devotee, that is very good. So, you know, I, I'm not really convinced that he should be a doctor and go and be a doctor, you know. He can always go back to that. If he can't be a devotee, you know, let him try and be a devotee for some time. He can always go back to being a doctor. That's always there. Maharaj, we really got a complete Maharaj perspective Jee, uh, of uh, what you are uh, explaining. Now, I would request uh, Radha Bhat Prabhu who has to say something. Okay. Vinod Pala Maharaj. So, Maharaj, in this group, we have a doctor who quit his job and who is a full time teacher. His name is Bhakti Prem Maharaj. Jai! <laughs> I didn't know that. He was a doctor. He gave it up. You'd see much better be a full time devotee than be a doctor. My God. <laughs> Back to Prim Maharaj. Did so much preaching, doing so much preaching, looking after temples and traveling and preaching, inspiring devotees. That's a real doctor. Spiritual doctor, right? But to be a surgeon, cutting, ooh, you're horrible, my God. Not very pleasant. So, <laughs> I, so I, I, I couldn't agree with many of your points, you know, you're saying how you want him to continue material life. <laughs> Okay, some, are any other question, points here from the students, you want to say something? When this, when this student is wearing ilak and going for his job, either student or operation theater, when he's wearing the ilak and going, it itself is a teaching. I can't it's understand, your, voice is, uh, your voice is not clear, something wrong with your mic. I think. The voice is not coming over properly. Can, can you understand what he's saying, Prabhu? Anybody else? Could you no, understand? No, we cannot hear him. No, I couldn't hear him. Maharaj, he is saying that uh, when he is putting up tilak and going for his uh, medical work, then itself he is doing a preaching. That's what, that's what he's saying. Oh, that's very small preaching work, very small time preaching work. You could do much more preaching work than that. Just because you put on tilak and you go for doctor, you're preaching. We could do much, much more preaching than that. Don't be satisfied thinking, oh, I'm preaching, I put my tilak on. <laughs> oh, Krishna, come on. You got to do more preaching than that. 
Hmm? Yes? Are there any other hands up? Comments? Um, yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I wanted uh, to also understand this. That what if if he wants to maintain a family, like if if he you know um, like of course we know that Krishna is a supreme maintainer. But what if he wants to get married later? And well, that's have... that's what I said. I said that. I said that's a consideration that he's coming from yeah. a wealthy family, and he has to consider that when we talk to him. When he has to decide, that we have to point out, you have to think about the future. Probably yes, you're going to marry, and you're going to marry, you're going to have to support a family. Now he may say, well, my father's very rich. <laughs> but, you know, the father, you don't know, there may be other brothers and sisters there, and, you know. <laughs> it's not that you can just depend on your father, you have to support yourself. So I brought that point up, that that's a big consideration. He has to think about the future. And if he is going to, if he has an inclination towards the Grihastha Ashram, which most people do and you would expect naturally, then he should think carefully about it, yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Here, I was just wondering, like, if this this young Prabhu, he yes, he is very interested in preaching, and that's very nice. But what in, in later stages, uh, he may not have a very, he may have an inclination uh, uh, to uh, uh, to get married or to have another life. So it's better for him to finish his studies. And if he still wants to preach, he can also preach, even being a doctor, like uh, if, even uh, devotees need doctors, like in Mayapur, like uh, how in Bhaktivedanta Hospital, uh, Radha, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj has brought it up. Uh, brought up. And so many devotees are being, uh, 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 are, um, being helped, you know. Uh, are, uh, so uh, it is so useful. Uh, even doctors can preach. It's not that doctors cannot preach, and uh, they can they can utilize their life as an example uh, to pre uh, uh, to being doctors as well as preaching. Like he can come to Mayapur, he can like uh, he can go to any other hospital, uh, any other uh, uh, temple hospitals are there. So they need doctors, and uh, uh, it's better for him to finish his studies. And yes, if he has to. If it's his vocation to come, become a sannyasi or a full-time preacher, he can do it. Let him quit and do it later on. But instead of stopping halfway through, halfway he's finished his four years, so let him complete it. And then if he has to, it's his vocation to, he has to preach, let him become a full-time preacher, no problem. But uh, give it another two or three years time, finish off his studies, and then let him decide. If the temple needs him as a doctor, Yes, let him become a doctor because even doctors can preach as a thing and at the same time he can take care of the pay, uh, devotees in the thing. Like how uh, so, many, so many devotees are getting admitted in the hospitals and okay. if... Uh, okay, hospitals, okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Maharaj we, we appreciate your point, but I also pointed out that there's so many doctors and we can always get doctors to come and te to, to teach, to uh, treat the patients, to treat our devotees. But we need preachers. We need dedicated preachers who are ready to give their life for the service of Lord Chaitanya's movement. Now somebody's a doctor, okay, you can always get doctors. And there's so many doctors coming out every year, the, so many medical colleges and the doctors are graduating. And you, you, every year more and there's doctors there. Where are the devotees? Where are the people who are dedicating their life? The less and less people, we need the dedicated preachers to teach the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Now if this man is actually really dedicated to preach, then let him try and be a devotee. Why be a doctor? It's more important, he's a spiritual doctor. Treat the soul. Teach Krishna consciousness. Don't get, you know, you're talking about being a doctor and, oh, 
There's so many doctors. We can get doctors all the time. Where are the devotees for preaching? There's so many, so much need for Krishna consciousness. Devotees to travel and preach and teach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there's a lot of missionary work needing. We have hospitals. We don't have, you know, there's a lot more hospitals than there are temples. So we're trying to encourage people to give their life for the service of the, But the, as, the, as we said, it's a question, is he, is he actually able to, is he seriously thinking that he can give his life? And if he can't, then okay, then be a doctor and at the same time preach. Like that. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, let's see, where are we? You know, we, we <laughs> we'll go back to our PowerPoint here. Let's see. Is there, okay, this is a quote here from the lecture on this verse, the key verse, is the uh, eighth verse of the second chapter. The eighth verse, uh, you can discharge your duty very nicely, but you have to see whether you are developing attachment for Krishna. Attachment means love, whether you are trying to satisfy Krishna, that is the test. If that is not done, simply formulas. If you execute the formula without any satisfaction of Krishna, then Sutta Goswami said it is simply laboring and waste of time. Vish Vishvakshena kastastuya notpadayad yadiratim shrama evahi kevalam. So, this is Prabhupada's uh, point on it. So, what have we looked at today? We're looking at assessing the situation from various viewpoints, right? We did consider various viewpoints. Should he keep up the occupation? Should he keep up studying or should he become full-time devotee? There are pros and cons. Then consideration of the consequences of particular actions. You know, if he becomes a doctor, all right, he's a doctor, he can preach also, but he's a doctor, you know, it's, it's not going to be like a full-time devotee. But full-time devotee means dedication, that he couldn't really expect to marry if he's a just a full-time devotee, ashram devotee. Then the principles behind Shastric injunctions, consideration of the principles behind Shastric injunctions. There are Shastric injunctions. Well, we were quoting, Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. If you're not developing attraction for Krishna, then it's useless labor. So that is a test how much he's able to become attracted to Krishna. Okay, so ability to as as select appropriate Shastric reference. We can find references to say, be a doctor. We can also find references to say, don't be a doctor, be the full-time devotee. <laughs> the question, which one are we going to take? You know, you can find Shastri references to support all the different opinions. It's a question of which one is the most suitable, most appropriate for him. So we've looked at, we're looking on the second chapter, we have a, quite a bit to go yet on the second chapter, but we did have a look at the overview. And here we've been looking at verses number 6 to 11, 6 up to 11. 
which you considered most useful in preaching. Explain why and discuss. So we heard some of you explain some things. That was from chapter 1, of course. Then the standard of first class transcendental religion with reference to verses 6 and 7 of the second chapter. First class transcendental religion, first class devotional service, pure devotion, right? Tavaipum sam paro dharmo, ahaitakiya pratiyata, it should be unmotivated, it should be uninterrupted, unbroken. Then it is pure devotion, it satisfies the soul. And we're evaluating the importance, the importance of occupational duties and Krishna consciousness. What should we give more importance to, occupational duty or Krishna consciousness? Well, it will be different for different individuals. We have to consider the situation. Somebody can be a dedicated Krishna conscious person and somebody's got other occup they've got their duties to do, family responsibilities. It's a different thing. It's going to vary. All right, and then conclusion, a very little statement from Prabhupada. Atma suprasidati. The need of the spirit soul is that he wants to get out of the limited sphere of material bondage and fulfill his desire for complete freedom. He wants to get out of the covered wall of the greater universe. He wants to see the free light and the spirit. That complete freedom is achieved where he meets the complete spirit, the personality of Godhead from 2nd chapter, text number 8, purport. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All right, any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, are we going to get a OBA questions today? Oh, yeah, let me get my wit. I have to look at my book. Let me see, just give me a minute. Where is that? Where are the questions? <laughs> Educational goals. One of the preliminary self study questions, uh, there are some questions on page 11. Page 11, huh? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Oh, discussion topics. We have some questions on this page. No, no those are not, those are discussion topics. That's from the text. Where are the questions? Maharaj, page number 19. 19. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Well, this is the objectives, the beyond, this, see, this is the educational goals, these are not the questions. Uh, Maharaj, your document and our document, the page numbering are, are different. Yes, Maharaj, in ours we can see open book assessment questions. Really? Yes, Maharaj. Well, why is it not in my book? I must have an old one or something. 
Um, they are just after Canto One, Chapter Three overview. Chapter Three overview after. Yeah. Chapter. Yes, my dear. After that. Mm -hmm. But that's where I am. Chapter Three. Maharaj, yours will be uh, page 17 after 16. Yeah, I'm on 17 now, but it's... Because I have the, the old page book 17, with me. Page 17 is simply the overview of the third chapter. Okay. Because I also have the old book, but I was just wondering for that. Where are the questions? I don't see. I see questions. So you got that unit one learning objectives on that chapter nineteen. Oh, I've got it now. I think this is. Oh no, those are the questions. The six questions. <laughs> no, those are different questions. These are the questions. Chapter one point three. Page number twelve. Page number twelve. Okay. This, this, looks this is discussion topics for the first chapter. Yeah. Before unit two starts, uh, you uh, it is there, Maharaj. Before unit two starts, I went there. I couldn't. Maharaj, it is not there for in your book because it's in only in our book. It's yeah. only in your book, yeah. I, I, I went I, to the end of the unit and. Maharaj, I have the teacher's handbook, and ours is the student handbook. They two are different. It seems, Maharaj. Well, what you have to do, you have to send me. The questions. You send me the questions, and I'll, I'll see them. Can you, can you put it on the screen? Uh, yeah, someone can share. Yeah, if I can. How many questions are there? Five questions are there, Maris. Really. You want to read them to me, and if you read them to me, I can pick out two. Uh, Maharaj, the co-host can share maybe the screen, and because it was handed over to us in the soft copy only. Okay, can we can we share it? Um, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, Maharaj, if I get a, if I get a sharing permission, then I can share share the screenshot. Yes, who is it? Who's in charge? Who's Maharaj, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. Okay, yes. So, page, page go to 20, page 20 it is there. Is 19 or 20. Yep. Okay, open book assessment. Can, could you make it a little bigger, Prabhu? Yeah. Marat, you can zoom the screen. Okay, I have to zoom the screen. Okay, on the, okay good. Yeah. Okay, answer to the following essay question. Srimad mm. Bhagavatam Sambhis Krishna's absolute truth. Show them how. We have to give only one question, Maharaj. Really? No, I think, yeah, so new regulations, only one question. Oh. It is wrongly uh, written by any two. It is only one to be assigned from each unit. Oh, only one. It says two of the following essay questions. Yeah, that's wrongly written. Uh, in our uh, uh, orientations also, it is said that from every unit, it is going to be only one. All right. Go ahead, let me just see the next question, number three. Could you scroll but down? It doesn't harm if we attempt to. <laughs> well, it harms the teachers who have to mark them. <laughs> no, as per Mayapur Institute, every unit, we have to do only one. So you can you cannot upload more than one. You have okay, to select okay. one, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. 
scroll down a bit to properly hear and speak Srimad Bhagavat and describe how you feel challenged trying to develop the love quality. Oh no, I like the first question. I think the first question is good. Number one. So we'll attempt the first question. Yes. Number one. Number one. Yes. Yep. Okay. There's A, B, C also. You have to answer all those parts. There's a lot there. My goodness, it's a lot to do. All right, number one, understanding personal application. Number one, for the open book assessment. Is that all right? Okay. Give you something, yes, give you something to work yes. on? Yes. Maharaj, what is the deadline to submit? Oh, I don't know. I'm not in charge of that. You have to ask the monitor. Deadline is uh, uh, the day, day of the uh, uh, CBA exam. Yes. <laughs> 12 o'clock in the night. <laughs> Okay. Our deadline is for every unit is the day of uh, the CBA 